Good morning and welcome to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Sunday, um, which is the, I believe it is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, this morning, all of our announcements that we have are in our bulletin and you can find those online at pinnaclelutheran.org. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 790, Praise the Lord, the Almighty, verses 1 through 4. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will give our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what you have, we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake has forgiven you all of your sins, as a called and commissioned servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue on now with the service of the word. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called you, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All kings of the earth shall give you thanks. O oh Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing all the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the word of, work of your hands. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God the Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, and we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you have, what, what you have done through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading. The 
the Old Testament reading according to Isaiah chapter 15. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hen, and, the, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her what, what wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. And joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving in the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from, from me, and I will, sit, will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hopes for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heaven, and look to the, at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they, do, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be there forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And we speak the gradual together. Oh, the depth, oh, the depth of the, the riches, riches and the wisdom, wisdom and the knowledge, knowledge of God. God. How, how unsearchable, unsearchable are his judgments, judgments and how inscrutable his ways. ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And the epistle's reading is from Romans chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and inscrutable his ways. For you has known the mind of the Lord, or, has, or who has been his counselor, or who has given him given a gift to him, but he might be repaid. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory, amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone, among you are not, among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with a sober judgment, each according to the measures of faith that God has assigned for him, for assigned. For as in one body we may have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our servings, then one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts is, is in his exhortation the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does act a mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And we recite the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, Lord whom, whom shall, shall we go? go? You, have you have the, the words, words of eternal, eternal life. life. Alleluia. 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 Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, 
You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the hymn of the day is hymn number 570, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Good morning. This morning we're looking at Matthew 13, 13 through 20. And the title of the message this morning is, Who Do You Say That I Am? This is an extremely important message that Matthew has penned out for us in the scriptures. The message of Jesus teaching his trusted disciples as well as everyone who reads scripture. Jesus is asking two separate questions here. First, he's asking of what the people would think and what do they think in general. Then he turns the questions directly to him, to the 12 disciples and to us. But who do you say that I am? Yet Jesus knows the heart of every one of us. He knows our thinking. But our tongues can sometimes be unpredictable to ourselves. And what comes out of our tongues sometimes we wish that we never opened our mouths. But at times we say the wrong things to many different people. But here Jesus is asking a direct question of his disciples, besides what he hears from the crowds. And this question is interesting because if we look at today's culture, we look at some very interesting questions, answers to the question. And many of them, I think we know what the answers are. For so many of us in the society today have gone their own ways We see it in the cultures in Europe, and we see it in Canada, and now we even see it in our country, where if we bring up the word Jesus, we are either canceled, condemned, or even worse, arrested, as they are in Canada. But Jesus is asking two separate questions here, and the question that we need to look at and focus on is what does Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Matthew 13, 13 through 15 says this, when Jesus came to the region of uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do you say, say, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But if you ask people today, many of them will say a prophet, a good man, one who was a great teacher, a rabbi. But the disconnect, which is the most important lethal question is, who do you say that I am? Because the big disconnect where the wheels fall off the train is when we deny Jesus Christ. For there is a hell that many do not want to think about. But the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is asking the all-important question for our own salvation. Who do you say that I am? The question comes back to us. Is he your handy go-to person at the right times? Is he the genie in the bottle They say, yes, Lord, you are Lord and God when I need you in our daily lives, only when we have deep trouble, illness, separation from family, or deep despair. When all else fails, you are the Christ. Fix this for me. You are the God that I need now. Only when we come to Christ and know who he is in our daily lives. 
Do you say, he is my Savior, my Lord and my God, and worship when I need him? Do we worship him and think of him in terms of the Son of God during the Advent Christmas season, forgetting him for the rest of the winter and then pick it up again in Easter? Does he take a back seat to our lives? Do we find ourselves coming to church only when the calendar is empty on the weekends? Do we find that we push him to the back of the bus, to the back seat, or in a closet until we need him? And Jesus is saying, who do you say that I am? Do you only need me when you are in dire straits? Do you only come to me when all else fails? Do you only come and worship together with other fellow worshipers when my calendar is empty? But if something comes up or I feel like sleeping, I'll come next week. And what has happened to our churches over the period of years is the churches find themselves, even before COVID, with many empty pews. And Jesus is asking us and pleading with us, who do you say that I am? For I am there for you. But Jesus is asking us and continues to ask the question because he wants us. He wants none to perish, all to come to him. And Jesus was testing specifically the disciples. And Peter confesses boldly, and he, we should use it as an example for how imperfect Peter was. He still was the foundation, the rock of the church that we know today. For Jesus uses an imperfect people. He uses me, he uses you. He uses every one of us who would come to him and declare that yet he is God. Faith is the key here. Faith is a gift that is given to us when we are available for him 24-7, not when our calendars are available, but when we come to him on our knees and know that he is there for us. Peter is speaking here for the 12, but clearly states the faith that he had. And God planted the church for our salvation, not for his. Not that he could claim the church, but to claim us individually, his soul, our souls, to his glorified body. Matthew 16, 16 to 18 says, And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. We sometimes forget that. We sometimes forget that the church will prevail, regardless of what people may say in this culture today, that Jesus Christ is the foundation for our eternity, our lives, and the church. And Peter boldly confesses that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus, our God, is asking you. Our God is asking you. Do you want me in your life? Do you know what I can do for you? Do you know who I am? Do you really love me? Do you really care that I am there for you, and if you open your eyes, open your heart and your mind, I will be there for you. This world offers so much distraction in our lives today. It offers so much for a fleeting time. But the devil has got his toolbox open, and he uses it every single day against us. He uses it against us physically, 
in, the, in our availability to get up and walk and talk and carry on despite our illnesses. That Jesus is there for us through the Holy Spirit. Do we declare, do we confess that he is our God? Do we confess that we love him? Do we confess that we need him more than we could ever possibly know? Do we confess that we on our own are lost? That we sin constantly, day by day, by our thoughts, our words, our actions? And Jesus is pleading with us, do you know who I am? Do you know that I can be there for you? Who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter's rock, his bold confession, was a solid foundation that we have the church today. And regardless of how we look at churches today, we here at Pinnacle are united knowing that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He went to the cross. And we do preach Christ crucified every time we speak of the Scripture. And the keys that Christ is talking about here, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whoever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And when he had ordered his disciples not to say, anyone, to say anything about the fact that he was the Messiah at this time, but Jesus is speaking of the keys of heaven. The authority that was given to loosen the bonds of sin, that we have also the keys, the keys that are available to us to tell others who are in a bondage, who are locked in sin, who are in that jail, the bars of sin that hold them. We, open the, we have the keys. We have the keys available to unlock the door to tell them about Jesus Christ. That is our mission as the church, to bring others to Jesus Christ, to tell them of the wonderful news that we have. But before we can do that, the keys that we have or would get, we first have to proclaim that I know who you are, that I follow you, that I will constantly look for you, seek you, pray to you, and know that Jesus Christ forgives us. His mercy and his grace are there for us continually. But the choice is ours, because hell is a real place. There won't be a time when it'd be too late. Our mission here, as we are on this earth, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, is to bring all onto him, to bring them to know the love and the joy and the peace that we know in Jesus Christ. We pray for all who have no concern for their sins, who sin constantly, who don't know or don't care. The devil lies in so many ways. We see it that the gods for this world and this culture are drugs, alcohol, sex, violence, self-centeredness. The exact opposite of who Jesus Christ is and what we believe in our God. Jesus gives us the keys and directions. He tells us to bring all unto him, to bring the children, to bring the elderly, to bring everyone to him. Matthew 18, 10 through 14. See that you do not despise the little ones. For I tell you that the angels in heaven always see the faces of my Father in heaven. And what do you think? If a man owes a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that has wandered off? And if he finds it truly, I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander. In that same way, your Father in heaven is not willing 
that any one of these little ones should perish. If this isn't proof, and this is why we need to read the Gospels, brothers and sisters, because if this is not the proof of God's love for each one of us, that none should perish, but yet hell is real. The law and the gospel, hand in hand. Heaven weeps over sinners who refuse to acknowledge their sin and continue to reject God. Such people in this culture today say, I do not believe or even I don't know or want to know. It's ancient history. I believe in my heaven. In these cases, the law takes over. And the people that continue to reject Jesus Christ, there will be a judgment. The keys will be locked. Whoever we bind in heaven, whoever we bind on earth, will be bound forever. Jesus speaks of the keys, the keys to eternity, the keys to him. For hell is a a separation, complete separation, forever and ever, with a loving God and with everyone else. It is our mission, brothers and sisters, to bring all unto him, to proclaim that he is Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. For when he looks at us in those loving eyes and points his finger at us and says, who do you say that I am? He's waiting for the words to say, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And without you, we are lost forever. So when we go home tonight and we go through our journey this week, remember that he is watching us and waiting for us to say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. You are my savior. In Jesus' name. Rise and repeat the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. It sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, from you, through you, and in you, you are all things. You have built your church on the confession of the gospel and have promised that the gates of hell will not overcome it. To your church throughout the world, grant the faith and courage to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, God Almighty, you transform your church by the Holy Spirit so that She does not conform to the world. Draw forth from your people their proclamation of thanksgiving that they may tell all of your wondrous deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, grant that the office of the keys may be honored among us in order that we may confess our sin and be absolved in the name of Christ. As you have so graciously forgiven us, Grant that we may extend this grace by forgiving others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, care for all families, children, single adults, and youth, that they might steadfastly walk in the ways that lead to eternal life. Grant an increase in wisdom and grace to all who teach and learn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, grant that all nations and leaders might act for peace promote godliness, and protect all who live under violence, oppression, injustice, and fear, that all people might extol you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
O Lord, lead us to repentance and faith that we may not think more highly of ourselves than in that is right, but that we should set our hearts and minds on things of God. Prepare us to receive the, the blessed gifts of your, uh, of your Lord's table, that this food may keep us holy and blameless in Christ now and when he comes again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. From you and through you and in you and in all things, to you, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, be glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. We'll pray together. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from all all comes all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we may, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Closing hymn is hymn number 537, Beautiful Savior. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.